What's up everybody, this is teacher Ivan from Next Gen Academy. Our goal in this channel is to help you achieve your highest potential and to help you understand subjects in the easiest and the most efficient way. If you'd like to get more tips and tricks on how to achieve A star in your IGCSE, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to this channel. Lastly, if you need any help in your studies, you can always head on to our website, link in the below or our Instagram, drop us a DM and we'll be able to help you. Enjoy this video and I wish you all the best. Okay, hello my next gen fam. We are gonna go through this paper, May June 2023, paper 13. Okay? Let's get straight into it. Okay, let's go to question one. Okay, write down the period in radians of three tangent theta over two minus three. Okay, how to find period? So we first need to know uh, what are all these values first. Okay, this one will affect amplitude. Okay, amplitude. This one period. This one, vertical translation. Okay, so how to find the period? Period formula is for tangent. Uh, don't get confused between tangent and sine and cos. Okay, for period, this is pi over b. Okay, pi over b. So here, your b value is one over two. So pi over one over two, which will give you. 2 pi. Okay, the B uh, is 1 over 2. You got to remember when we do for sine and cos, it is 2 pi over B. Don't get confused between both the formulas. Okay, question B. On the axis, sketch the graph of 3 tangent theta over 2 minus 3 from negative pi to pi, stating the coordinates of the points where the graph meets the axis. Okay, so whenever we draw a graph, right, we normally the question, uh, they will ask you to find what is your x intercept and what is your y intercept. Okay, so go and calculate. Okay, number one, we actually need to know generally how does the shape uh, look like first. Okay, you look over here, right? They say your period right now is 2 pi. Okay, originally, right, your tangent graph, how does it look like? Okay, like this, right? Okay, from here to here, like this, then like this. Okay? All right, now, right, what we need to draw is from negative pi to pi and your period is one over two, right? Okay, so what will happen right now? Okay, so your graph originally is like this. Okay, we need to know uh, based on this, this two is the asymptote, your graph is like that. Okay, we need to know the general shape first, uh, otherwise we won't be able to, to draw it. Okay, then after that, we have to see all the other values. Now you got your three, you got your minus three and your these two, how will it affect the graph? So you need to do a calculation first. Find what is your x intercept and your y intercept. Okay, x intercept, y is equal to 0. 0 equals to 3 tangent theta over 2 minus 3. This one is 3 tangent theta over 2 equals to 3. Tangent theta over 2 equals to 1. Okay, theta over 2 is what? 1 over 4 pi. Theta is 1 over 2 pi. Okay, or pi over 2. Go and calculate this first. You don't calculate it, you won't get the marks for this. Okay, then y intercept y intercept x equals to zero and this applies for all graph uh, not just this tangent graph here okay sub in three tangent zero over two minus three y is equals to negative three okay so at negative three and pi over two okay these are also just roughly estimate uh. okay here negative three okay pi over two will be in the middle uh. okay middle of here so your graph, uh, as mentioned just now, originally is like that. Now, that is. Okay? One thing you have to be careful, uh, how it bends also. Okay? How it bends. Okay. You all see here, uh, I always see students also, you all know generally the shape, but then when you all bend that time, uh, got bend a bit, go back. Uh. If the marker is very strict, right? They'll minus your mark. Okay? So this one, uh, don't go bend like this also. Okay? Don't go bend towards the asymptote. Remember, when approaching asymptote, it will approach infinity. Okay? This is for first question. All good? Good. Second question. Let's go. 2a. Write 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 in the form 2 bracket x plus a squared plus b. Okay, we need to know that this is a CTS form. Okay, got something square, right? Okay, how do we do CTS? Uh, last time teacher taught you all the CTS way is that we're going to factorize just from a and b first. Okay, but if you want to do from A, B, and C, also can. Okay, if A and B only, 
here like this okay, you factorize your two and two bracket x plus five over four square minus five over four square plus three okay then here you get two you okay, open up the bracket up plus five over four square then minus 25 over 8. Okay, so you just that is our multiply, then plus 3. Your final answer will be 2 bracket x plus 5 over 4 square minus 1 over 8. Okay, second one. Hence, write down the coordinates of the stationary point. How to do stationary point? You will just take these two values. Okay, for the x, you take the opposite symbol. If it's plus, become minus, minus, become plus. This will be your y. Okay, so here will be negative 5 over 4, negative 1 over 8. Okay, next one. Solve the inequality. 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, less than 15 over 8. Okay, this one you can use the CTS form above, or if you want to solve it by doing a new quadratic equation, also it's fine. Okay, so it's up to you. Your answer eventually will be the same anyway. So if you want to use the CTS form from above, you continue. Okay, change it to CTS first. Then you make X as the subject. Okay, so this other, you just bring the 1 over 8 to the right-hand side first. 2 bracket X plus 5 over 4 square. Less than 2. X plus 5 over 4 square. Less than 1. Then X plus 5 over 4 plus minus 1. Okay, you just find your roots first. Is that X is negative 9 over 4 and negative 1 over 4. Okay, since this is a quadratic inequality, you take the bottom part. That is. Okay, so you get in between negative 9 over 4 to 1 over 4. Okay. <coughs> Next one. Question 3A. Write this equation. The A and B are both positive as a single logarithm to base 10. Okay, write it in the simplest form. So change everything to log base 10 first. So 3 log 10 plus log A square minus log 4B square power 1 over 2. Okay, you got to use your power law here. Okay, bring it all to the power. This one will be log A square minus log. Okay, this one will be 4, 1 over 2, B 2 times 1 over 2, okay? Make sure you know how to do your indices, huh? Open up the power. Okay, minus log 2b. And here log 1000 a square over 2b. Okay, simplify it. Log 500 a square over b. Okay, 3b. Given that 2 log c3 equals to 7 plus, 4 log 3c, okay, find the possible value of the constant c, and then they want it in exact form. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do here, change to base c first. Okay, change it to base c. So 2 log c3 equals to 7 plus 4 log c3. Okay. Rearrange it up. Uh. Bring it all to the left-hand side first. 2 log C3 minus 7 minus 4 log C3 equals to 0. Okay, you need to learn how to recognize this form already uh, because this one has come up quite a number of times. You will be able to convert this into a quadratic equation. Okay, just in case any of you don't know how to convert this one, uh, the log 3C, this one is change of base. Uh. If you want to just change the base and the argument together with each other, you get 1 over log C3. Okay, you just need to interchange it, but you get one over something. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna to make it simple for y'all, you let u or let m okay, equals to log c3. Okay, so you can see it clearly. 2m minus 7 minus 4 over m equals to 0. 2m squared minus 7m minus 4 equals to 0. Okay, go ahead and factorize this. 2m plus 1, m minus 4 equals to 0 m negative 1 over 2, m equals to 4. Okay, then you change it back. Log c3 equals to negative 1 over 2. 
log C3 equals to 4. Okay, let's solve for negative 1 over 2 first. I'm going to change this one from index form to log form. Okay, so here you'll get C power negative 1 over 2 is equals to 3. C, okay, here will be 3 power negative 2, which you'll get C is equals to 1 over 9. Okay, next one. This one also, log C3 equals to 4. So C power 4 is equals to 3. C is equals to uh, 3 power 1 over 4. Okay, don't write it in any other forms. Huh? We need to present it in the form like this. Okay, next one. Question 4. Okay, question 4. The straight line y equals to 3x minus 1 and the curve x, y equals to 4 minus 3x minus 2x squared, they intersect at a and b. Okay, second one, second statement. C, which is a negative 8, lies on the perpendicular bisector of the line a, b. Find what is a. Okay, I'm going to call this equation 1. This one, equation 2. Okay, first things first. Let's find a and b. Okay, find a and b first. So I'm going to sub in 1 into 2. Okay, how to sum in 1 into 2? x times 3x minus 11 equals to 4 minus 3x minus 2x squared. Okay, open up the bracket. 3x squared minus 11. x equals to 4 minus 3x minus 2x squared. Okay, so here, 5x squared minus 8x minus 4 equals to 0. 5x plus 2, x minus 2 equals to 0. Okay, so here you'll get x equals to negative 2 over 5. x is equals to 2. After you get the x value, you are going to sub x into 1. Okay, so what we get here? y is 3 times negative 2 over 5 minus 11 y is negative 61 over 5. Okay, so this one also, we're going to find a y value. 3, negative 2 over 5, minus 11. y is equal to negative 5. Okay, my a value here, negative 2 over 5, negative 61 over 5. b value, okay, it doesn't matter which one is a, which one is b. Lah. Okay, that's how you got two points here. Okay, so I got two points. Next thing I want to find is the perpendicular bisector. Yeah, how do we find perpendicular bisector? I need to first find the midpoint of AB. Okay, midpoint AB. Okay, write down the equation. Minus 2 over 5 plus 2 over 2 minus 61 over 5 minus 5 over 2. You will end up with 4 over 5 and negative 43 over 5. Okay, then you want to find what is the gradient of AB first. Okay, gradient AB, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, okay, which is equal to 3. However, this is not the gradient that we want. We want to find the gradient of perpendicular, okay, which is negative inverse of it. Okay, you just need to put negative, then you inverse it. Put it all together, we're going to put into y minus y1. Okay, y plus 43 over 5 equals to negative 1 over 3. x minus 4 over 5. Open up the bracket. Then simplify it. Okay, minus 25 over 3. Okay, so what do we have? We have the equation of the perpendicular line already. Now we want to sub in c okay the c value that you give us is a and negative 8 okay so i'm going to sub in negative 8 equals to negative 1 over 3 a minus 25 over 3 okay, rearrange the entire equation your a you get is negative 1 okay right let's go to question 5 
find the first three terms in the expansion. X squared minus 4 over X squared in descending powers. Okay, descending powers of X. Give each term in its simplest form. Okay. If you're not sure, when you all do series at time, okay, this uh, binomial expansion, write down the formula from the front first. Okay? Write down all the formula from the formula sheet before you all do. Okay, what's the formula? A plus B power N equals to A N plus N C1 A N minus 1 B okay, then plus N C2 A N minus 2 B2. Okay? Always remember, write it down first. Okay, expand it. Uh, put it into the formula. So X square, you want from descending powers, right? Okay, so you're going to put this. X square 10 plus 10C1. X square 9. Negative 4 over X square 1. Plus 10C2. X square 8. Negative 4 over X square 2. Okay, open it up x20 plus 10 x18 minus 4 over x squared okay, plus 45 x16 then 16 over x power 4. Simplify it. x20 minus 40 x16 plus 720 x power 12. Okay, next one. Hence, find the coefficient of x to the power of 16 in the expansion of x squared. Okay, this whole equation. <clears throat> okay, my voice, I cannot read it out already. It's too long. Okay, so we expand this one first. Okay, let's expand this part here. Okay, what would you get for this? This one, you will get uh, a over a plus b bracket square, which is x power 4 plus 4, plus 4 over x power 4. Okay, so I look, I take this one on top. Okay, cross multiply with this other bracket. Okay, do I need to go and multiply all of it? No need, okay, don't waste time doing it. You only want x to the power of 16. So you select the terms that will give you x to the power of 16. Look, just look at the x term. x20 multiply by 1 over x to the power of 4. Okay. x16, multiply the one that don't have any x. x power 12, multiply x power 4. Okay. I like to also do like this. Uh. I don't like to keep writing the, the x to the power of 16. So I will just write like this. Coefficient of x power 16. Okay. So coefficient, this one is 1 times 4. Minus 40 times 4. 720 times 1. Okay. Then just add it all up together. So uh, yeah, 1 times 4 plus negative 40 times 4 plus 720 times 1. Okay, you will get 5, 6, 4. Okay, that's for question 5. Okay, next one. Question 6. In this question, lengths are in cm and angles are in radians. The diagram shows the circle with center O, radius R. A and B are the circumference of the circle. Area of the minor sector. OAB is 25 cm square. Okay, then it's theta. Find the expression of the parameter P of the minor sector AOB in terms of R. Okay, what's the formula here? Area is half R square theta. They gave us here, area of the minor sector is 25. Okay, so theta is 50 over r squared. Okay, why you want to find this? Because when we do the parameter, we don't want the theta. Parameter is 2r plus r theta. r theta is the arc. Okay, here, yeah. r theta. So 2r plus r times 50 over r squared. Okay, simplify this. 2r plus 50 over r. Okay, next one. Given that R can vary, show that P has a minimum and find this minimum value. Okay, how do we do this? When you see the word maximum minimum, you will think about dy over dx equals to zero. In this case, it will be dp over dr. 
Okay, we have to check uh, dp over dr equals to zero. You will get your stationary value. Then you need to check whether it's maximum or minimum. Okay, so remember these keywords are uh, maximum, minimum, value, dy over dx equals to zero. Then you need to find your nature. Uh, okay, whether it's a maximum or minimum by d square y over dx square. Okay, let's just write what is p first. p is 2r plus, okay, I'll write it in terms of power, 50r power negative 1. Okay, let's find dp over dr is 2 minus 50r to the power of negative 2. Okay, so here you want to write it as 2 minus 50 over r squared back also can. Okay, I want to find what's my stationary value first, which is dp over dr is equals to 0. 2 minus 50 over r squared is equals to zero, two is equals to 50 over r squared. r squared equals to 25, r is plus minus five. Okay, how do I know which one? You go check, lah. okay, go and check. d square p over dr squared. Okay, I'll check out uh, this one, d square p over dr squared. You gotta check to get the full marks out, uh, by the way. Okay, don't just assume that it's the positive value. Okay, so here, you will get 100 r to the power of negative 3. Okay, I check which is maximum minimum. Substitute your r value into d square p over d, d r squared. r equals to negative 5 and r equals to 5. Okay, substitute this in. d square p over d r squared equals to 100 over negative 5 cubed. Okay, which is negative 4 over 5. And okay, negative 4 over 5 is less than 0, therefore, maximum. Okay, this one, d square p over dr square, this will be 100 over 5 cubed, okay, which is 4 over 5, more than 0, therefore minimum. Okay, they want us to find what is the minimum. Minimum means r equals to 5. So I'm going to use my r equals to 5 to sub into p. p is 2 times 5 plus 50 times 5 power negative 1, okay, or 50 over 5. P is equal to 20. Okay, we are done. Halfway done. Next one. Question 7. Okay, we have an equation y equals to ax to the power of b. Okay, they give us a table of values. Use the data to draw a straight line of ln y against ln x. Go and calculate your table of values. Okay, one thing you all see over here, graph type of question actually when sketching uh, for straight line graph, seldom comes out. But what I observe, it has been coming out. So just take note on this. Uh, okay, you all need to know how to draw the, the graph because if you see in the past year question, sometimes not that much for you all to practice. Okay, so go and do more, more of this one uh, when you all do the straight line graph. Okay, ln x, ln y. Okay, just type into your calculator all the values, ln x, ln x, ln x, so ln 1.5 to 2.5, then for the ln y also. You will get 0 0.41, 0 0.69, 0 0.92, 1.1, Here you get 2.6, 3.3, 3.8, 4 4.3, and 5. Okay, then we are going to plot the points out. Okay, so here is 0 0.41. Okay, let's see other points. 0 0.41, 2.6. Okay, then next point, 0 0.69. Okay, so about 0 0.7. Uh, 3.3. Okay, about here. Is that 0 0.7? No, this is 0 0.75. So about here, actually. Okay, yeah, just double check it out when you all plot the points out. 0 0.92, 3.8. One thing, uh, remember, use pencil and one trick also. You put the X, uh, don't put it until so fine. Okay, don't need to draw it so accurate. Draw it fatter a little bit. Okay, so that when you all draw the line across, uh, easier for you to draw also. Okay, next one 1.1, 4.3. Okay, 1.4, 5. Okay, 
Connect all the dots together. You get your straight line graph. I modify, modify a little bit. Uh, so easy for me to, to calculate. Okay, normally uh, when they ask you to draw already, but they ask you to find. Find the gradient, find the y the set. Okay. <laughs> so look at your next question. Use your graph to estimate the value of A and B. Okay, so A and B, you need to convert the equation that is given to you to y equals mx plus c form first. So the equation is given to you y equals to ax power b. Okay, we add a lot at both sides. So here, ln ax power b. This is ln a plus ln x power b. Okay, I change it to b ln x plus ln a. Okay, so this formula is big Y equals to m big x plus c. Okay, what's my gradient? Gradient is b. Okay, you just take any two points, huh? Okay, so I will just take based on the points that I plotted out. Okay, what are the two points? Uh? I will use this one. 0 0.41, 2.6. Okay, and then this one is 1.45. Okay, so my B value is actually 5 minus 2.6 over 1.4 minus 0 0.41. Okay, which you will get 2.4. Okay, then y intercept is equals to ln a. Okay, so base it on your own graph. Huh? Don't need to follow mine. Okay, normally there will be a range of values that they accept. Right? Okay, according to my graph, huh, it is 1.7. Okay, I think 1.6, 1.7 huh, should be acceptable. So ln a equals to 1.7. Okay, a, you inverse your ln, you get e 1.7, a is equals to 5.47. Okay, next one. Question C, estimate the value of x when y equals 100. This one you want to use graph or you want to put it into the equation also can. Okay, for me, I think I just like to put it in the equation. Uh. So graph, uh, sometimes you have to read properly and also write down the uh, equation that we found first, the, based on the value. Okay, so at y, equals to 100, ln 100 equals to 2.4 ln x plus ln 5.47. Okay, rearrange the whole thing, bring all the, okay, ln 100 minus ln 5.47 over 2.4, which is equals to ln x, you should get 1.210 equals to ln x. E 210 is equals to x. Okay, x you'll get. 3.36. Okay, once again, uh, follow according to the value of your y-intercept based on your graph. Okay, if you use 1.6, I think your answer will be 3.42. Okay, they allow the answer, the range up from 3.2 to 3.5 <clears throat> because it is all based on the graph that you have drawn. Okay, next one. Question A. Okay, they give us this diagram. OX is 3 over 5 OA. Y is the midpoint of AB. Okay, find in terms of A and B, what is A, B? Okay, let's plot what we have here first. They give us OB is B. OA is A. Okay, then you read over there, OX is 3 over 5 OA. It means here is 3 over 5a, here is 2 over 5a. Okay, so here, AO plus OB is negative A plus B. Okay, well, why I like to write down the vectors first? Huh? So later on when you check back, it will be much easier for you all to, to check back. Okay, next one. XY, I can use XA plus AY. Okay, do I have AY? Okay, Y is the midpoint, right? So based on my previous question, I already found here negative A 
plus b. Okay, so here is xa plus ay. Okay, so here xa is 2 over 5a plus half of ab. So half of negative a plus b. Okay, which you will get 2 over 5a minus 1 over 2a plus 1 over 2b. You end up with negative 1 over 10a plus 1 over 2b. Okay, next one. The lines OB and XY are extended to meet at the point Z. It is given. This one. XYZ is lambda XY. BZ is mu B. Okay, let's plot it out first. So here is mu B. Here is lambda XY. Okay, so we write down whatever. Okay, this one later we will, we will need to use. So from the previous question just now, this one is B. <coughs> Here later we need to use this uh, XO, la, okay? negative 3 over 5A. Find XZ in terms of lambda A and B. Okay, so what I will use, XZ is XY plus YZ. Okay, what is YZ? They gave us in the question, and we want it in terms of lambda. So this one will be lambda XY. Okay, just... Um, Okay, what is x, y? Okay, uh, what we can do here, we can, because you see both got x, y, right? So we can factorize out the x, y first. Okay, so I'll write it as 1 plus lambda x, y. Okay, you don't want to do this, also, okay. You can just slowly go and uh, open up the, the bracket. Okay, so x, y, based on the previous one uh, that we found just now, is negative 1 over 10a plus 1 over 2 B. So here will be 1 plus lambda negative 1 over 10a plus 1 over 2b. Okay, you want to open up the bracket here, also can. Okay, but I'll just leave it here for now. Okay, next one. Exact. Exact. I will use xo plus ob plus bz. Just look at your diagram. Huh? Negative 3 over 5a plus b plus mu b. Okay. I'm going to factorize out the b. Okay, make it into plus 1 plus mu b. Okay, now, hence find the values of lambda and mu. Okay, so you're going to take the equation from c and equals the equation of d. You see this type of vector question, always very similar one. Okay, they give you some two unknowns. Okay, they ask you to find the same terms. They ask you, then you just need to equate it with each other. What you need to do is you need to equate the A with the A, the B with the B. Okay, so <coughs> we take the equation from C first. Okay, what we got here was 1 plus lambda negative 1 over 10A plus 1 over 2B equals to negative 3 over 5A plus 1 plus mu b, okay? We need to equate a with a, b with b. So I'm going to open up the bracket here. It is multiply. So we get negative 1 over 10, 1 plus lambda a plus 1 over 2, 1 plus lambda b equals to negative 3 over 5a plus 1 plus mu b. Okay, equate this and this this one, and this one here. Okay, I'll put like this, uh, a. So that means I want to find what is the coefficient of a, uh, We should get negative 1 over 10 minus 1 over 10 lambda equals to negative 3 over 5. I'll open the bracket already. Here, negative 1 over 10 lambda equals to negative 1 over 2. Lambda is equal to 5. Okay, question B. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 lambda equals to 1 plus mu. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 times 5 equals to 1 plus mu. Mu is equals to 2. Okay, about to finish it. Okay, question. Okay, so far? Okay, any question? 
until here. Yeah, all good, huh? Okay, let's go to question nine. Okay, question nine, I think uh, my students uh, who did this paper, uh, they got a bit stunned here because of the, they asked you to draw three graphs. Okay, so you, you all need to know uh, in your exam, right? In your IUCSC exam, actually is you need to know eight plus three graph. Okay, the plus three uh, is the one from kinematics. Okay, so you need to know how to draw your ST graph, your VT graph, and your AT graph also. Actually, this ST, VT, and AT, right? They didn't give you any example in actually your NMF textbook. Okay, but where was it actually explain it from? It's actually you all need to learn from your mathematics. Okay, when you all learn how to, like what's the relationship uh, between ST and VT? Okay, actually in maths, you all learn ST and VT, la, not really AT, right? Okay, so they will expect you all to actually learn how to convert it, okay, between each other. Okay, let's look at this one. They give us here S is equals to 3T plus 2 T minus 4 squared. Okay, they want us to find velocity V of P is 0. Okay, we're going to find our favorite teacher, oh, Mr. Siva. Okay, Mr. Siva say S V A. Displacement, velocity, acceleration. So, I will need to differentiate my S to get V. Okay, let's uh, do this one. Okay, so you want to open up the bracket or you want to do product rule up to you. Lah. Okay, this one, I think either way also can. Okay, I'll just do product rule here since the value is already like that. Lah. 3T plus 2, V is equal to T minus 4 squared. Okay, this one, right? 3T plus 6. Okay, this one, V prime, 2 bracket, T minus 4. Uh, U prime is equal to 3. Okay, cross multiply it. You will get your V. Uh. Okay, this one, don't get confused. Uh. V over here is dS over dt. Again, okay, not the V on top. So we will get 3t plus 6 times 2 times t minus 4 plus 3 bracket t minus 4 squared. Okay, I factorize out t minus 4. I'll get 6t plus 12 plus 3t minus 12. Okay, which I'll get t minus 4 times 90. Okay, the one when my v equals to 0. So v equals to 0. 90 times t minus 4 equals to 0. t is equal to 0. t is equal to 4. Okay, so we got two values of t. t equals to 0 and t is equal to 4. Okay, we need to understand very, very clearly what does this value actually mean also. Okay, you look at the graph question, got how many marks? Three marks, two marks. See here, three marks, two marks, five marks, seven marks. Okay, then another two marks. Okay, how do we make sense of this? They want us to draw the displacement time graph of P. Okay, do you all struggle with this question? Or you all do the, the exercise? Okay, without looking at the answer. So, how to do this? We need to first understand the equation. Okay, what is S? S, what graph is it first? Okay, the equation is 3 bracket t plus 2 t minus 4 squared. Okay, what type of graph is this? Cubic, right? Okay, so we define the shape first. Cubic. Okay, positive A or negative A? Positive A, right? T and T squared. So positive 3 T squared. So you get set face, happy face. Okay, intercept. I, uh, intercept. I have to find what's my x-intercept, y-intercept. Okay, let's find x-intercept first. X-intercept, I just need to take the one in the bracket. Uh, so, t is equals to negative 2. t is equals to 4. Okay, but the 4 there got a square. So, this is my equal, equal roots. Okay, so that means the graph will just touch at that point there. At t equals to 4. Next one. Y intercept, okay, when your t is equal to 0. Okay, so sub in. <coughs> S is equal to 3 times 2 times negative 4 squared, which you'll get 96 here. Okay, the last one, we want to find um, what are the maximum points. Huh? So here, these are important. Your maximum point, you are looking back into here. t equals to 0 and t is equal to 4. Okay, because when we differentiate, right, 
Okay, remember when dy over dx equals to zero, those are your stationary points, right? This is the same thing also, ma. Okay, with ds over dt equals to zero, it will be at zero and four. Okay, so zero and four, if you look back, right? Um, yeah, we already found the, the value. Okay, when t is equal to zero, it is the y intercept. Okay, t equals to four is the x intercept. Uh, we know that it falls at zero. Okay, so we already found the values. Uh. Okay, it happened to be at the y intercept and the x intercept. Okay, so you just need to remember uh, this one you have to understand from the previous question itself. Your actually it's not uh not just max only, max and minimum point. Okay, max or minimum point. Okay, so let's plot out the important points uh, that we need to, to, to have. Okay, here got five. We draw it to scale. Okay, use your ruler measure properly. So yeah, okay, just estimate four point one, two, three. Four, five. Okay, important points that I need to have when my t is equals to zero. Um, my y intercept is ninety six. Okay, and this happened to be the turning point as well. Then the next one is four. Okay, at four here. Okay, so if you look over here, the other intercept is at negative two. So my graph is like that, like that, like that, and like that. Okay. Uh, so we need to know overall, uh, even the part that we never draw, if, but we just draw this part here. Only. So the graph will look like this. Okay. This is my highest point already. Uh. Wow. Okay. This is a cubic graph. Okay. Next slide. On the axis below, sketch the VT graph of P. We already found the V equation. <laughs> v is 9T, T minus 4. Okay, in fact, actually, this one, they're not asking you to convert, lah, right? They are just asking you to base it on the equation, then you sketch it out. Okay, so you're actually just drawing a cubic graph, cubic equation graph, now a quadratic graph. Okay, so quadratic graph, the shape, this one is a, Happy face graph. My intercept. Okay, uh, let's find x intercept first. X. Sorry. T is equal to zero. And then t equals to four. Okay, your x up. X equals zero, x equals to four. Okay, my y intercept. Okay, what's my y intercept? So y intercept it is when x equals to zero, t equals to zero, which is also v equals to zero. Okay, so it will intersect here. Okay, so let's put the points. Okay, so it'll be a happy face graph at t equals to zero and t equals to four. So here, one, two, three, four. Okay, one small thing, huh? please label it. If you don't label it, no marks. Okay, put a happy face graph. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, like this. Draw it smoother. Lah, yeah? Okay, next one. Find expression for the acceleration of p at time t. Okay, so for me to get uh, acceleration, I need to differentiate my v. My v. Okay, 18t. Minus 36. Okay. All right, now, last one. Huh? So they want us to draw acceleration time graph for this one. Okay, so I just need to draw A equals to 18T minus 36. Okay, we need to know what's the shape first. Shape, straight line, going up. Okay, find what's your x-intercept, y-intercept. Okay, y-intercept, x equals to negative 36. X-intercept, okay, your y is equal to 0 x is equals to 2. Okay, y equals to 0. Okay, this one is y equals to negative 36. Okay, so plot out the, the point. Okay, so here I got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Huh? Okay, so at 2, you will intercept. Okay, then uh, we just roughly estimate uh, the negative 36. Okay, let's put it here. Lah. Negative 36. Draw a straight line like this. 
Okay, done. Okay, let's go to the final one for today. Okay, question 10A. Show cos 4 theta minus sine 5 4 theta plus 1 equals 2 cos square theta. Okay, this is a proving type of question. So left-hand side okay, is equals to, okay, how can we do cos 4 theta minus sine 4 theta plus 1? Okay, there are many ways that y'all can do it. Um, the one that I will do, okay, I will use a square plus b square equals to a plus b, a minus b. Okay, the first line uh, for this one, a square uh, minus b square equals to a plus b, a minus b. Again, okay, my a square is cos square theta square, okay, minus sine square theta square. Okay, so my a is cos square theta, my sine is sine square theta. So this will become cos square theta minus sine square theta. And here, cos square theta plus sine square theta plus one. Okay, then um, sine square plus cos square. Okay, we know that sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to one. Okay, this one will be equal to one. So you'll be left with cos square theta minus sine square theta plus one. Okay, what is cos square theta minus sine square theta? I want to change it to two cos square theta. Okay, so I change from here again, cos square theta is equal to one minus sine square theta. Okay, this one is one minus sine square theta. So I change it to cos square theta minus cos square theta. A plus plus, sorry. Is that a? Will be equal to this. So you get 2 cos square theta. Okay, equal right hand side. Shown. You cannot find. Shown. You cannot prove it also. Just write. Shown. Okay, just write the final answer. Shown. At least, hopefully, you can get some marks. Okay, one last one. Question B. Solve the equation. Okay, you look at the previous one and this is similar. The only thing different, theta become 5 over 3. Okay, and then we want to solve for negative 3 pi to 3 pi. Okay, so let's convert it to the cos 2 cos square theta first. So now it'll be 2 cos square 5 over 3, okay, which is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, so here, negative 3 pi to 3 pi. Okay, as mentioned, uh, every single paper also confirmed will have one trivial question like this. Uh. Okay, so I hope that you all know how to do it here. So cos square 5 over 3 is equal to 1 over 4. Cos 5 over 3 is equal to plus minus 1 over 2. Okay. Find my alpha. You don't put the plus minus first. You just put 1 over 2, which is equal to 1 over 8 pi. Okay. This one needs to be in radian mode. Uh, this one, I think someone was asking, right? Okay. How, how to do this again? Okay. So for the angle, uh, you all have to be careful. Okay, so now the angle, what we want to find is 5 over 3. They gave us based on the original domain is 5 only. So I need to go convert it. You divide the whole thing by 3. Okay, so 5 over 3. Okay, like this. So you go from, you want from negative pi to pi. Okay, you want from negative 180 degrees to 180 degrees. Okay, next thing that we need to take note of, because it's plus and minus, so you take all four quadrants. Okay, so let's draw the ASTC here. My ASTC, all four quadrants. Okay, so my alpha, 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 and alpha. Okay. However, how do I choose the quadrant? Which one is it? I basically want to start from negative pi all the way to pi. Okay, so you have to know uh, that it's from here, go all the way to here. Negative pi to pi. Okay, in fact, it should be the other way around. Negative pi to pi. Okay, if you all don't know how to do right, what you're going to do is you need to at least understand, okay, I got my positive side and one cycle negative. Okay, so how do you calculate for it if it's just one is positive and one is negative? You just need to calculate the positive one first, 
then you minus two pi to all the values. Got it or not? Okay, don't overthink it. Just find the four quadrants. Okay, four quadrants in the positive side. Then you minus two pi to all the values. Okay, but that will take some time because you need to reject some of the values. Okay, the proper way to do it. Okay, why I keep teaching you the proper way because you're going. Some of you here are going A levels, right? And next time you learn trigo, you also need to know how to do the proper way. Right? Okay, so you just understand. Here is zero, ma. Okay, how do I go? The negative, the positive side. I'll get x is equals to alpha here. This one, second quadrant is x equals to pi minus alpha. Okay, if I go to the negative side, this is x equals to negative alpha. Okay, go here. This is negative pi plus alpha. Okay, I can guarantee you 101% confirm got one question like this will come out. At least one in your paper. Okay, that you all will be sitting in a few days time. Okay. Calculate the value. Okay, from here, this is where you're at the positive and negative, are not in the final step. Okay, so here you get um oh, sorry, uh, is it teacher right wrong? Right? It's not one over eight pi, it's one over three pi. Okay, one over three pi. Second quadrant is two over three pi. Okay, so design and design. Now what you can do uh, you take um one over three, you minus you take the negative side here. Okay. You cannot take this one and then minus two. You'll get out of the range. Right? Okay. If you want, if you really don't know how to do it, uh, to select the quadrant, my advice is you find first quadrant, find second quadrant, find third quadrant, then find fourth quadrant. Make sense? Okay. So that means you're going to find another um, two quadrants. So total, then after that, you minus two to all the values. Okay? So you have a total of eight answers. After you get the eight answers ready, you find the final one, then you reject the one that is out of the the domain of the angle here. Okay, but I don't like to do that way because that one is in a way you're not really understanding lah, okay, the proper way on how to, how to do this question. Okay, so here I'm just going to go to the negative side in the fourth quadrant, which is negative uh, 1 over 3 pi and then negative 2 over 3 pi. Okay, multiply the whole equation by 3. Here will be pi, 2 pi, negative pi, and positive, uh, negative 2 pi. Okay. All good, all good. Okay, 100 marks, huh? this question, this paper. Okay, how many marks do you all get? Type in the chat. Okay, so this is the end for paper 1-3, May, June 2023. That's all.